Charges the Chargers unleashed. Sebastian Joseph, they know the vibes. We outside. You're listening to the Chargers Unleashed podcast with your host, Dan Wolkenstein and Jake Hefner. Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Hefner and Dan Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. Today show, of course, being brought to you by Bet Online, Charger Bowl Family, Rock Solid Sports Memorabilia, and Liquid Death. If this is your first time tuning into the show, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Dan Wolkenstein, week four is just on the cusp. We spent the last two days essentially talking about the matchups, talking about how the Chargers are going to get on track. We decided it's been a while since we have had a special guest on this show. So what better way before they take their flight out to Houston, Dan Wolkenstein, we were able to nab a very special guest for this afternoon, getting hyped for the Chargers matchup against the Houston Texans. As always, I hand the reins to you for the introductions. Oh, this is fun. Yes, Uh, we have a very special guest, Mr. Morgan Fox of your defensive line for your Los Angeles Chargers. You can be joining us next on Chargers Unleashed. We're going to get into all kinds of things, whether it's going to be talking about him personally on and off the field. We'll talk about how the defense is looking, mentality going into this Houston Texans game. So much to kind of go through with Morgan. Going to be a fun one. Jake, uh, over, under, how many times we're going to see the Chargers defense force a punt? This Sunday versus Texans. I'm going to go four and a half. Mm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go under. I'm going to go under. I'm going to go under. I'm pushing the over. I'm pushing the over. I'm saying it's four. I'm going to go under on that. So speaking of wagers, speaking of over unders, uh, friends over bet online, sponsor the show. Uh, Let's talk about them. Free money. Yeah, bet online the fastest and easiest way to wager on all of your favorite sports contests and events with first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head on over to Bet Online today or use the mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use the promo code BELIEVE50, that's B L E A V 5 0, and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Jake Morgan Fox is going to be joining us here in a bit. Can't wait. Um, look, I feel great. You feel great. I say hydrogen to the team. You stay hydrated all the time. Uh, another friend of the show, sponsor Liquid Death, murdering thirst as well as making sure that we stay green uh friends of the show let's talk about that real fast hopefully we need to get some of these out for the chargers did like, have you even gone to get uh, have you have you ha- I gotten left my to house go? oh I, that's true i keep forgetting you're coming off of covid so <laughs> at your earliest convenience you need to rehydrate with with some liquid death that's for sure for anybody who's out there whether you have a ralph's <laughs> next to you and albertson's next to you 7-eleven if that's in your closest proximity a kroger if you're on the east coast go make sure and look uh to get yourself a nice big tall can of liquid death no it is not an alcoholic beverage even though it makes shift like it's a tall boy in the water section it is not so don't be fooled by the packaging uh liquid death as dan mentioned murdering thirst for people out there with its hydration and its sparkling water in three different flavors Uh, i believe it comes in mango lime and regular sparking water if whatever your preference may be but they're also doing a great thing um donating to uh help in recycling as far as plastic goes so it's a great organization great product would very uh, very much encourage you guys to go check it out for yourselves go on over to liquiddeath.com slash lafb tell them chargers unleashed sent you and go get yourself some liquid death without further ado morgan fox from your los angeles chargers coming up next on chargers unleashed well we are just two short days until week four matchup between the Chargers and the Houston Texans, your defensive lineman for your Chargers, one of the versatile additions brought in this offseason. Morgan Fox joins us on Chargers Unleashed. Morgan, thanks so much for hopping on. So close to this matchup on Sunday. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Of course. Of course. Look, we're going to get into all kinds of stuff. We're going to get into kind of the team mentality versus Houston. We're going to get into kind of the defensive assessment so far this year. Um, maybe get into the last week's player-led meeting. You know, hopefully get to know you more a little bit more on and off the field. Um, but just to kind of kick it off, like fresh off of practice, you just got done. How was practice for Friday? How are you feeling? What were some of the highlights for you today? 
It was a great practice. You know, we definitely, you know, got locked in, got a little more tuned in to what we're doing this week. The effort was high, energy was high, and it was it was a good practice, good way to to kind of get rolling into this weekend. Love it. Now, now, obviously, it's been kind of a rough couple of weeks for the team, not just in the wins column, but from like a health standpoint as well. Like, what's been the biggest message from Coach Staley this week as you guys kind of head into this game versus the Texans? Um, take care of yourself and be responsible for yourself. You know, at the end of the day, we're, we're athletes and we got to be responsible for, for our body. Our body is our job and make sure you're eating right, you're, you're stretching right, you're working out, you're getting body work done, you're doing all the things on the side to make sure that going into Sunday, you're as healthy, as strong, and, and as, you know, feeling as good as you can going into the game. Now, Morgan, three games into the season now, currently records is one or two, having to go against two tough of divisional opponents. We know the, the game last week against Jacksonville, but just trying to get things back on track now for this team, how would you assess the performance of the defense as a whole through the first three games, and then maybe specifically for you and the defensive line unit as far as uh, – you know, how, how everything's been laid out so far? Uh, you know, I think we're playing well. I think that we definitely have things to improve on. I think, you know, A, you can say that about any football team, any game. You know, that's that's the, uh, the the right answer. You know, we definitely have things we can improve on. But on a serious note, we're, we're playing well. We're meshing well together. We're, we're still trying to kind of get in the groove of things. But guys are starting to come alive. I mean, you saw Sebastian and Austin, you know, come alive last week. And, you know, we're, we're starting to figure out how to rush well with each other. But, you know, we as a defense, you know, we've got to correct the little things, little communication errors here and there. You know, guys, you know, just just getting to where they're supposed to be. But we're, we're going to be all right. You know, and then as far as the D-line, like I said, we're playing well, but we can always be better. You know, your, your team is great when the D-line can take over the game. And uh, I don't think we've done that yet, but we're, we're nearing the stage where we definitely can start getting after these running backs and quarterbacks and hopefully, you know, start getting the ball out and, and helping change some games. Hundred percent. Now, now you, you go one and one, two tough divisional games. You know, disappointing loss last week to Jacksonville. We we heard a lot about after wow. last week's game. There was a player led meeting. I believe it was SJD who was leading it. You know, how, how and why? You know, take us into that. Like, how and why did it come about? Like, what was the message? And what kind of for your from your perspective? Like, what were the main takeaways you got from it as you guys are practicing this week? You know, the main takeaways were we were, were too good of a team to put on tape what we put on tape last week. You know, and. That's no slight to Jacksonville. They're a really good team. You know, that that is a very good football team, a very well coached football team. You know, but, you know, we are a very well coached and a very talented team. And, and we didn't put that on tape last week. So that was, you know, a big part of the message was, you know, we got to you know make sure we're taking this seriously and no one's just going to roll over and die because of the talent we have and the names we have. We got to come out and play and teams are going to show up and try to prove themselves every week. And we're one of those teams that have to prove ourselves, too. So kind of one of those things that, you know, we got to we, we got to start taking responsibility for our own destiny and, and make sure we're working and not just, you know, letting the hype try to carry us to and from places. Was there anybody other than Sebastian just today that kind of spoke up? Like, were there any voices that kind of came out that said something besides him? No, no one needed to. You know, he kind of hit everything right on the head and, and everyone felt the message that he was trying to get through. And I think everyone responded really well during the week in practice with, you know, the effort and the attention to detail that we had. And I think his, his message really hit home with everyone. Now, Maury, we know with your versatile skill set, familiarity with Coach Staley, just in previous teams and regimes, you're capable of playing both inside and outside on the edge. Has there been any indication from the staff, from Coach Staley at all, given what unfortunately we saw happen with Joey Bosa for him being ex- being out for an extended period of time, any more opportunity for you to possibly get in a little bit more handful of snaps on the outside just to generate and help out with that pass rush a little bit more? I think it's always a possibility. You know, I think that if they need help outside, you know, I'm available there if they need it. But we have so many talented guys, you know. We got, you know, Kyle who can play, you know, play out on the edge or play inside and he can rush as well. You got Chris who, you know, is stepping into a bigger role now and, you know, he's really going to be able to showcase his skill set. So, you know, if they need me, I'm there. But, you know, we got the guys that can definitely hopefully, you know, shoulder the load and, and get ready to, to go make those plays. No. And it, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and this is an interesting matchup for this defensive line going in uh, against this O-line um, against Houston. Larry McTunsell has been having a good season thus far. Scott Questenberry, a former Chargers, playing well for them at the center position. What's your assessment of their offensive line performance so far this year or, or just as the or just from from their entire offense as a whole? Uh, they, they play really well together. You know, they make a lot of plays. You know, they all their games have been close. First off. You know, you don't have close games if you're not a good team, you're not a good offense. Their O-line plays extremely well together. Like you said, you know, those guys have been having really good seasons. Um, 
So it's going to be a tough matchup for us. You know, it's a game that we're going to have to come and be physical. You know, try to try to play physical through the o, or through the O line and try to try to make plays where we can. And if we can get after them in the rush, really try to you know win our one on ones and get our matchups where we want them. We're talking to Morgan Fox, wrapping up before he heads over to Houston to take on the Texans. Pivotal Week Four matchup. Um, I guess question for you: Teams one and two. What would you say is kind of the main reasons? Like, like how how did last week happen? I mentioned like that it was you guys are too good to come out and put a thing on tape like that. Like, what happened? Like in your guys' mind? Like, was it just like you guys woke up on the wrong side of the bed? Like you guys didn't have their Wheaties? Like, what what was it? I mean, really, we, you know, we went out there, we got our butts kicked. That's what it was. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, there's no waking up on the wrong side of the bed. I wish that was an excuse, but <laughs> that's a good football team at the end of the day. And we they showed up to prove a point, and and we didn't. At, at the end of the day, they came out and they went and played, you know, their game. And, you know, we, we didn't show up. We, you know, we had a couple mistakes here and there. And, and, you know, it feels all bad when you have a score, you know, that happened the way it did, you know, but we had some things, you know, that we did really well, but a lot of things we didn't, you know, and I, unfortunately in this league, you know, one or two minor things that might be not a big deal in practice or not a big deal somewhere else, you know, hit you in a game and, you know, you know, momentum gets going, that snowball gets rolling, it's hard to stop it. And that's kind of what happened. That, that freight train got off the tracks, and there was, you know, it, it was tough to stop. Yeah, it, definitely. And it, Jake and I were talking about this earlier in the week, Morgan, and we were kind of talking about, like, we're looking forward to hopefully seeing, like, a pissed-off Chargers defense. Like, I, we mm-hmm. thought we were going to see that last week, you know, whatever happened. This week, we're like, if we don't see it this week, like, I don't know what's going on. And everybody talked about, like, the potential of this defense. You know, got Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, obviously Bosa's out. But, like, when you look at the statistics, I know the statistics don't say the whole story. But, like, so far through three weeks, 27th in hurry percentage is defense, 28th in pressures, 23rd in the NFL in sacks. Like, I know those aren't numbers that you're expecting or fans were expecting. Like, how do you see the defense improving on, you know, making the quarterback uncomfortable, whether that's pressure, pocket collapsing, sacks? Like, what do you guys need to do in order to be better moving forward in those regards? First off, you got to stop the run. You got to get them thrown on, you know, third and – Third and eight plus, third and seven plus. You know, we can't give them short third down, short second downs to throw the ball where they can get these quick passes off. They can, you know, get it to where you know we have extremely talented rushers, but it's hard to hard to get home in you know two seconds, and uh, especially you know with the you know O linemen in this league. So you know, we got we definitely have to stop the run. That's where it's going to start. We really have to earn the right to rush the passer on third third and seven pluses and try to get back there. And then when we do, we really have to win our one on ones. You know, we have to communicate our games if we you know if we're running them guys have to to be confident in the rushes get there and you know when they get to the quarterback get the ball out where you know we can rush you know people have seen we can rush you know now it's just about putting it on tape and, and pinning our ears back and going i love it all right and, and last one you know going back we got houston coming up like what are some of the key areas of opportunity you guys need to look for to focus on to get the win like what are your keys to victory whether it's you the defense or team as a whole I mean, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but we got to stop the run. I mean, at the end of the day, I think that's a formula at all in this league is you have to stop the run. You know, teams can run run the clock out. They can dictate how the pace of the game. So, like you said, I think we need to show up as a pissed off defense. We need to show up and and, and really try to, to send a message and set a tone that, you know, we can and we are an elite defense. So we need to we need to get out there and, and you know, make sure we stop the run, set set a tone, you know, from, from the start of the game, you know, and then we have to – we have to get to a quarterback. We have to affect them. We have to, you know, make them throw uncomfortable passes. We have to get turnovers. We got to force turnovers on our end, and we have to make it a really, really long day for them as long, you know, as, as much as we can. I love it, Morgan Fox, number fifty-six on your Los Angeles Chargers. Morgan, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us for a bit, answering some of the questions. I know not all of them are easy questions, but at this point, <laughs> I appreciate your candidness. Um, Look. We're excited to see you and the team. Hopefully we do see a pissed off defense. Share the message with the whole team. Let them know Chargers Leash told me you guys see you guys pissed off. Um, uh, I'll make sure I let them know. <laughs> thank you. Safe travels. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys on Sunday. Best of luck. Stay healthy. And we'll talk to you soon, all right? All right. Appreciate y'all. Awesome. Thanks so much, Morgan. Thanks, Morgan. Right, have a good one.